Welcome to the online service. It's so good to see you with us today for this special service. We want to encourage you to get ready to receive from God, to enjoy His glory, to encounter Him, going straight to the throne room today and coming back full of the power of God, ready to give witness to Him everywhere you go. Let's sing together and praise Him with all of our heart. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see lightning, I hear thunder Something stirring six feet under Dead things coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection I see signs and I see wonders I see birds of living color Dead things coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And nobody fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And no mighty fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine. Our God is a good God. He's faithful. He loves you and he's got something for you today. So let's pray. Yeah. Father, as we pray today, we're asking that you'll move in all of our lives, that you'll touch every one of our participants and all of the listeners mm -hmm. and viewers, that each one can be touched by the glory of God and can hear their name in the Spirit and can recognize the Holy Spirit calling out to them and touching them and blessing them in the name of Jesus. I pray for all of those that have got cold and flu symptoms right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Sore throats, healed in the name of Jesus. Headaches, healed in Jesus' name. Coughing, sneezing, stops in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just pray today also for all those that are facing exams mm -hmm. and challenging workloads in their homework or school or education. We ask, Father, that you would enable each one to be able to learn, that you would bring them into favour with the teachers, favour with the markers, favour with people over them in authority, and that you would give them the wisdom they need and make them, like it says in the Bible, ten times smarter than those that don't have the Spirit of God. Let them understand, Father, and to flow in the Holy Spirit and to receive revelation of your word and of your truth and of all the answers they need to know in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, help them to focus. Focus on their studies, but when it comes to sitting down, that they will have your peace flowing through them and they would be open to your help as they do their exams. I'm praying for somebody today, you've had a, an ongoing lung congestion and I'm seeing there's a devil that's been harassing you, trying to hide within you. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I take it out of there right now. In the spirit, I see it lifting off and that congestion coming free in Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, I declare that is done as I have described it. I saw it in the spirit. You are free right now in Jesus' name. So breathe deeply and thank God. Father, I pray for those with ear infection. Let all ear infection be healed in Jesus' name. We declare freedom from pain, from infection, inflammation in Jesus' name. There's somebody and I see you've got a car in the garage and it's a great frustration to you because the car should be going and for some reason it's not. 
And again, I bind the powers of darkness around that. I bind every work of the enemy that would try to hinder your progress to seeing the fulfillment of the vision for that car to be restored and to run and to do its work. So in Jesus' name, we remove all the blockages and release the angels of God and the favor of God and the swift angel and the supernatural help of God's spirit. And we declare car be fixed, be running, be functional and operational and fulfill its purpose in the name of Jesus. I pray for others that feel like they have a, a project they want to complete, but don't have the finance to do it. I just declare the provision of God coming in to complete that project. Father, I pray for absolute wisdom to just show them where and how to move forward. And I thank you, Lord, where there is vision, there is provision. Amen. And we declare it now in the name of Jesus, provision coming in. Somebody else has been doing work at home. I see them in the garage. This is your project. Maybe you work from home. Maybe there's things you need to get done. And I'm praying for you now to come into great favor with those in authority that you need to get the business, to get the work, to get this work done, that you'll be paid and that you'll be prospered and blessed in whatever you put your hand to. In Jesus name, receive the glory of God helping you today. So I'm praying for somebody right now in the spirit you've been wrestling because of the threat or the possibility of having your breast removed and God is saying to you today, trust me, put your hand in my hand, put your eyes right on me and do not vary or deviate and I'll bring you through this situation if you'll trust me and if you'll let me guide you in this, says God, I will take the lead and I will show you where to go and you'll know it's me, says God, because there's always peace in my wisdom and guidance for you. The fire of the Holy Spirit is coming on somebody today who's watching. God has called you to do something, to go somewhere. He's called you into a ministry of travel and of moving forward. And I just declare it now and believe that the fire of God is coming into your feet and you won't be able to stand still. You're just going to have to jump up and take action and start moving forward because you won't be able to settle and you won't be able to sit still. This is not a restlessness from the enemy. This is the energizing of God's Holy Spirit enabling you to fulfill the call to get up and go with his message, with his calling and with his power to go around doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil. For God is with you in this. As you just continue to bask in his glory and continue to receive as you worship him with your whole heart.
Believe and build. In the good times, it's easy to laugh and to celebrate. But the question is, what about the hard times? When things are at their toughest, when things are at their messiest. It's very easy. Times the road is rough. It isn't very easy. Do you remember the words that have been spoken over your life? Do you remember your purpose? Do you remember what God has asked you to build? Or have you been discouraged and abandoned the plan? Proverbs 24.10 says, If you faint in the time of adversity, your strength is small. If at times you feel stuck, it's time to look for a way to partner with God and ask Him to show you the way forward. It's time to seek, knock and ask. Sometimes it takes an action of faith to get unstuck. And for each person, it may be a different action of faith to get unstuck. Nothing you do for God is something you do on your own. 2 Corinthians 6 says, We are workers together with Him. 
it's time to get back to our original purpose of building together with God. Many have lost momentum and purpose over the past few years. We've been focused on just holding things together, but we need to access God's grace to help us build, to continue forward and to progress. We must put these days of distraction behind us. There will always be some sort of distraction that tries to divert our attention. But these distractions don't have to impact us. They don't have to stop us or slow us down. God is still ordering our steps and giving us grace to build. And as we continue to move forward by faith, finances will follow and volunteers will follow. Proverbs 24, 3 says, Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. As we build with God's wisdom, he will bring the resources we need. We are co-workers with Him. He needs us to partner with Him. It is not all going to happen automatically. We look, we listen, and stay aware of what He is saying to us as individuals. We receive His creativity. There is no limitation on what we can do when we partner with Him. We can make a difference. He has given each one of us something we are to build and the wisdom to accomplish the task. It may be in our family, in our business or in our community or church. Wise people are builders, whatever we are building. Building is always a step-by-step -step process and at times things are stalled and certain building materials are not available and things are taking longer than we hope. It may look like nothing is happening for a time, but it doesn't mean that things aren't happening in the background. Sometimes when you get a prophecy from God, you have to follow some steps to see it come to fruition. There are steps before we see it come to pass. You can't skip the process of what it takes to see it fulfilled. There is still a foundation that has to be laid that nobody sees and there are still messy parts of the whole building process. But just keep building until it is complete.
Good, able, willing and abundant God. That's the title of today's message. And we're talking about what is God like? And so we've got quite a few scriptures for background to start us off. And the first point is that God is absolutely good. Psalm 119 verse 68 says, You are good and you do good. Exodus 33, 18 to 19 when Moses said to God, show me your glory, God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. God is absolutely powerful. Our theological word for this is omnipotent. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 in the Amplified Bible says, Now to him who, by or in consequence of the action of his power that's at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. God reveals his goodness through his anointed power. We find this in Acts ten thirty eight, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Amen. So God was with Jesus when he went around doing good. That's what God enjoys. Do you want him with you? I sure do. We just need to go around doing good for people. So God's objective is very clear. 
He wants you to enjoy abundant life and abundant goodness. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. James chapter 1 verse 17 goes on to say, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. God is good. God does good. He thinks good plans. He gives good gifts and he will never change from this in the slightest. No variation, not even a shadow of turning. God's thinking good things about you today. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Let's pray. Father, as we open your word, we're asking for your spirit of wisdom and revelation, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that you would give us immeasurable revelation of what you're saying to us today in Jesus' name. God wants to show off his goodness and to lavish honour and goodness on someone he chooses for his own reasons. Let me tell you a story. The legend is, some say it was Arnold Palmer, that a long ago a golf player went across to the Sultan of Arabia to do a golf tournament and the Sultan was so pleased and they'd all had such a good time. Before the player left, he said to him, I want to give you a gift. And when the man thought about it, he said, I don't want a gift from you. I've really had a good time. We've had a great golf game. And the Sultan insisted, I want to give you a gift because I want to lavish my goodness on you. And so the man was a bit of a golf club collector. So he said to him, all right, buy me a golf club. He said, no problem. And he went home and he waited because the Sultan said he would send it. And eventually, registered mail came in the post. And when he opened it, he found out what his new golf club was like. It was an 18-hole golf course and a 500-acre golf resort. It wasn't what he was thinking, but the Sultan wanted to show his goodness. Not because the player had deserved it, not because he'd even earned it because he'd been paid for what he did, but because the Sultan was good and able to do it. And it's just like God. And this shows up in the Bible, in the book of Esther, where Mordecai was chosen by the king to be honoured. Let's read this scripture together. Esther 6, 7 to 9. So he, that is Haman. Now Haman was a bad man, but the king asked Haman, what can be done to someone that the king desires to honour? Haman thought, surely it's me. So he listed off a lot of things. If the king wishes to honour someone, he should bring out one of the king's own royal robes as well as a horse that the king himself has ridden, one with a royal emblem on its head. Let the robes and the horse be handed over to one of the king's most noble officials and let him see that the man whom the king wishes to honour is dressed in the king's robes and led through the city square on the king's horse. Have the officials shout as they go, this is what the king does for someone he wishes to honour. We note that it doesn't say this is what the king does for someone who earned it, someone who deserved it. This is what he does for someone the king wishes to to honour. And God wants to honour you. God wants to be like this king, like the Sultan. He wants to show off his goodness. But unlike the Sultan even, God's riches and resources and ability to do it are limitless. God is infinite. God has so much to show and to give and to do through someone he wishes to honour so that other people would see just how good he is. It's almost like the king in the old days says, you want to know how good I am? You watch this. Here's someone that's unsuspecting, doesn't even know he deserves it. And so here I'm going to go show what I can do for someone I honour 
to show my goodness. Amen. And even Moses, when he was on top of the mountain, he prayed to God, God, show me your glory, your reputation, your greatness. And God said, I'm going to let all of my goodness pass before you. And so God is love. God is good. God is present. God is kind. God is many things. But today, the topic of this message is going to be limited to these three things. Number one, God is able. Number two, God is willing to do good. And number three, God is ready to make his word come to pass abundantly for you. Let's move on. Number one, God is able. Now we see this question about God's ability and God's willingness settled once and for all in a story from the book of Mark in chapter 1. Verse 40, Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. You can implies you have the ability. If you're willing, you can do it. God can get it done. Amen. So the creator of the universe is able to do anything. Think about that. Think about how able he is. And he sent the infinite Holy Spirit to live in you. That's why it says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Because the one that's inside you created the universe. He built all the galaxies and all the stars and all the nebula, the black holes, the suns and the moons. He made it all. He made you. Amen. Think about car makers for a minute. When they invent a new vehicle, not only do they make and assemble the vehicle, but they put aside spare parts for the vehicle. I don't doubt that even cars made back in the 50s Spare parts still exist in some big warehouse somewhere available for people to be able to fix what breaks down. So the manufacturer's idea is if I'm going to build this car, I have to have a network of dealerships and repair shops because someone's car might break down, it might get damaged, they might run off the road, they might hit something or break the undercarriage part. And so they need spare parts. And God is the same. When he created you, he made spare parts. And not only that, he knows how to fix anything and everything that can go wrong in a human life or a human body because he is a genius and he is infinite and he is omnipotent. He's all powerful. He can fix it. Amen. So what is God like? Number one, God is able. And number two, God is willing and is willing to do good for you. We read on this passage again. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now that question, if you are willing, is a question that has stumped a lot of people. Because intuitively, most people realize that God can. But the doubt they have is, is he willing to do it for me here and now? And Jesus answers this question once for all time with this leper. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. It's interesting, isn't it, that Jesus was willing to heal him and he did it there and then. No hesitation about that. Yes, I'm willing. And no delay. He didn't say, yes, I'm willing. Come back tomorrow. Come back when you've improved yourself. He just said, yes, I'm willing. Let's do it now. Amen. That's who God is. This story shows God's love, shows his goodness and power and willingness to act now, I remember one day when I was helping the pastor at Moorabbin at Harvest Christian Center and I had just become an assistant pastor or associate. And one day we were looking for a new warehouse in which to have church. 
And we went off to have a look at this little factory first thing on a Monday morning. And when we were there, the senior minister at that time was Tom Rawls, and he'd been away on the weekend ministering. And he just turned to us, all of us that were there, and he said, I still have the power of God on me that was healing the sick last night. Does anybody here need healing? And I did because I'd really hurt my back. And so I just turned around, he laid hands on my back, and it's so hard to explain what happened. I can't explain it, but I know. I get a bit of a fright out of it, but I know that I was instantly healed and all of that back trouble was instantly gone because God is willing and God is able and there's no hesitation. When I said to him, yes, it's me, I've got a bad back, sore back, he didn't turn to me and say, well, you don't deserve it. He didn't say to me, well, let's wait till next Sunday and I'll line you up at the altar call. He was willing without hesitation there and then. That shows what God is like. Amen. We went away once for a weekend of prayer and fasting when we were new Christians. And there was one of the young women. She used to be a dancer, I think, and a nurse. And she'd injured her back. And then we just put her in the prayer chair on that night. We prayed for her. And it was like I saw a vision of a completely reconditioned spine coming down and replacing the one that had been damaged. And I just saw it in the spirit and we prayed that she had a completely renewed reconditioned spine as a changeover, like when you take something in for your car, a changeover alternator or a changeover starter motor or something like that. They take out the old one, put a reconditioned one in, and that's exactly what happened for Michelle's back that evening. And Jesus showed this too when he came across the woman that was bowed over. This is in Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 13. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. So this wasn't Monday at a factory. This one's in church. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called to her and he said, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. He didn't say come back after the Sabbath. He didn't say come back when you've got your life sorted out. He didn't say go away and work on your faith for another 20 years. Jesus was willing there and then without hesitation. He had the ability. He had the willingness and he did it now. This is what God wants to do for you today. He is good. He's willing to do good for you today. Healing, provision, comfort, spare parts, whatever you need and whatever you want, as we'll see in a minute. Number three, God is ready to make his word come to pass abundantly for you today. Amen. He's ready to make his word come to pass for you abundantly today. He's not at all hesitating. He's got the power. He is willing and he watches over his word to perform it. Let's read this passage now from Jeremiah chapter 1 and it's verses 9 to 12. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, Behold, I've put my words in your mouth. Now that's a big hint for us. This is what God did for Jeremiah and it's what we need to do as well. We need to make sure we've got God's word so flowing in our heart, overflowing that it fills our mouth all the time. See, I've set you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. If we only understood the infinite power of God that's at work in us, we would realize that this is available for us too. Through the word of God, by filling our hearts with it, speaking it out in Jesus' name, we too have authority to affect and change things in the world of politics, the world of governance around us today. We need to take hold of this truth and speak it. But for today's message, let's read verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, 
Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see the branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Whatever God has said, whatever he's promised us in the word of God, he's ready to perform it now. We live in the time of the end, the culmination of all the ages, the building to the greatest revival and ingathering of souls ever, and the greatest display of God's glory that's ever been on this planet. We need to understand that God is ready now to perform his word and he's ready to perform his promises for you in your life today. What are his promises? So whatever promise you can find in the word of God, it belongs to you. Listen to what the New Testament says. Now, this is after Jesus, after his death and resurrection. This is written by the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, who established so much of the new covenant in writing for us. For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. Okay, going backwards through this, this is going to be through us and for us. What's the objective? That God can be glorified. This is how God can show off his goodness. Amen. How? All the promises of God. When we're in Jesus, they are available to us and the answer from God over every promise is yes. But Lord, you promised to meet my needs. Yes. But God, you promised that by your stripes I'm healed. Yes. But you said you'll never leave me or forsake me. Yes. All of these promises are yes in Jesus. God's not holding back. He's like the Sultan who wants to show off his goodness. He's like the king over Mordecai. He wants to show his goodness and he's going to do it by fulfilling his promises for you so that those in the world around have some kind of a reason to get interested in the gospel because unless they see his goodness, they're just not going to even listen. And we need to understand that God wants to show his goodness and it's going to happen through you. Don't hesitate to fulfill what Jesus said. Freely you've received, freely give. Give out God's goodness. Let his goodness go to people. Don't hold back. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Just believe that God wants to show his goodness. If you lay hands on the sick, he says they will recover and he's ready to perform that word through you today in Jesus' name. Well, let's see what it says about his promises. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there's no variation or shadow of turning. There's no changing on any of this. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. So he's now saying, yes, well, that might be true for someone else, but not for me. If you're in Christ, he says, all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. You just have to be in Jesus, amen. And then it's an issue between the Father and the Son that died for us. It's almost as if God and his family were sitting around one day having a meeting and Father was saying, I've got so much love and life and goodness, I want to show it to someone. Now, in the Old Testament, the king showed it to Mordecai, but God said, I want to show it to more people. And are thinking about this thinking, then he came up with a plan. He said, I've got a dream. I've got a dream that we can devise a way that all people can receive my goodness so that all people not in covenant with me yet can see that I'm good and that I'm worth seeking. I've got a plan for everyone to see my goodness, everyone to experience my goodness. And the rest of the family, which I guess is the Holy Spirit and Jesus said, how's this going to be done? The father said, it's going to cost me a lot. It's going to cost me the sacrifice of my son. But I believe there's a way for everyone to see and experience my goodness, to know my love, and for my glory to fill the earth as people find out what I'm really like. This is so, so important. 
So as we go through these promises today, see which of them quickens to you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to look at a lot of promises right now. What about the promises for healing? We have this one, 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. If you were healed and it applies to me, then I'm healed. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus and I just need to simply put my trust and faith in that truth. As Jesus said to the woman healed from the issue of blood, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Matthew 14, 36, And someone came to him and they implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. You've just got to believe in the promise. Reach out and touch Jesus with the touch of faith. Now that's not a physical touch. It's a relational touch. It's a heart open before him and being open in worship, reaching out in your spirit and just connecting with him and letting that power come all over your life. Just like that day when they touched the fringe or the hem of his garment. And in James chapter 5 verses 14 to 15, this could be your promise today. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, he'll be forgiven. Maybe this is a promise for you today because you're the sick person and you need forgiveness and you need help because maybe you're a new Christian call for the elders of the church and they can then take this promise for themselves. Maybe you're the elder and he's calling you today and you've got to believe that when you pray for them, the prayer of faith, that the healing power of God is going to flow and if they've committed any sins, they'll be forgiven. What about God's promises for provision? Philippians 4.19 And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Again, if you're in Christ Jesus, the context, of course, is that you're giving, you're sowing, you're investing in the gospel, and then God meets all of your needs in ways that only he can do and in ways that are really only known to him unless he reveals it to you. But don't ever doubt God can do it. He can get your needs met by his way his system, just do what he prompts you to do. Amen. Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Some people say, yes, God meets your needs, but not your wants. Well, that's what that scripture says here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's another one that says God will give you the desires of your heart. As long as it's not illegal or immoral, as long as it's something good and it's in line with God being good and only good and perfect gifts coming from him, if that's the case, then something you want can come to pass. Maybe you want to take a trip. Maybe you want a new car. Maybe you want a baby. Maybe you want a new house. Maybe you want an open door for your ministry. What is it that you want today? Because it says, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. I won't have any unmet wants, any needs, any lack. But remember, it's on the condition that the Lord is my shepherd and you've got to submit under his rod and under his staff and you've got to follow the good shepherd's voice. Amen. If you do, goodness and mercy will follow you. Amen. And the promise finally for answered prayer. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? The only condition in that verse is that we ask. So let's ask for favor, for abundance, for healing, for provision, for comfort, whatever you need today. Ask. 
Don't be ashamed to ask why. Not because you're talking God to do something about which he's reluctant or because you don't earn it or deserve it, but you're asking him to watch over his word and perform it in your life because you're in Jesus. He wants to do all these things. He wants to demonstrate and show forth his goodness so everyone around you can say, this is what the king does for someone he honors. This is what the king does for someone who believes in him, who trusts him, who goes to church, who worships him, who praises him, who lives their life for Jesus. This is how the king desires to honor them. This is how the king lavishes goodness on them. A golf club would be a small thing for God. Amen. He wants to give you over abundantly, far above all you could ever ask or think. There's no limits. There's no limitations. There's no hesitations. And the promises of God are yes, they are amen, and they are now. Amen. So today, what do we do? Believe it. Receive it today. Then pour it out on others. Go around being like Jesus. Go around doing good, healing everybody that's oppressed of the devil. Comfort others with the comfort you receive from God. So in conclusion, what did we learn today? What's God like? Well, God is love. God is good. God is willing. Number one, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that we can ask or even dare to imagine. God's ability is beyond anything we've ever thought of. So there's no problem with his ability. Number two, God is willing. Why? For his own reasons, he wants to show off his goodness. Let's flow with that. There's no hesitation, no holding back. As long as you're in Christ, all the promises of God are yes, and amen. Amen. And number three, God's ready to make his word come to pass abundantly right now for you. As long as you can find it in his promises, he's ready to watch over it and make it work for you. This is an era of God's goodness. Get ready to receive. No, you don't have to earn it. No, you don't have to deserve it. You have to put your faith in Jesus, be in Christ Jesus to be born again. So speaking of born again, if you haven't been born again, if you're not in Christ Jesus, you can do that today. You can receive. We already looked at a couple of verses about this. The first one, whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. So that's a good step. You have to call in the name of the Lord. The next verse, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, so you know when you call on him, you've got to use the word Lord. And you've got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. In other words, you're not calling on someone who's dead. You're calling on someone who's alive and he can help. And then 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All the old is gone. You're born again. You're a new creation. Jesus said, unless one's born again, he can't see the kingdom of God or enter the kingdom of God. He said, you must be born again. And that's very easy to do right now. I can show you how to receive that new birth from God. Remember, Jesus said, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those that ask him? We just need to ask today. And the good thing of being born again is yours. God's not holding back. This is yours today. And I can show you how to receive right now. Simply say this prayer after me and receive. Say, Jesus, you repeat that, Jesus, and keep repeating. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I turn from my old life. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your new birth. I believe that you rose from the dead. Today I confess that Jesus is Lord and by his grace, I will follow him from this day forward. I am in Christ Jesus. 
I am a new creation. All the old life passed away. Everything's been made new. Now I'm born again. My name's in his book in heaven. And Jesus is Lord. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer and said it to God sincerely, you called on the name of the Lord. And right now, I believe that you're saved, that you're born again, and you just need to tell someone now and take all these promises to heart, receive, believe, and let God demonstrate his goodness through you, through, first of all, through a changed life, and then the fulfillment of all his promises, which in Christ are yes and amen for you today from this point forward. Amen. Well, God bless you. Well, we thank you so much for joining us today. God is good and he has only good things in store for you. So as you go through your week, remember his goodness is following you in Jesus name. So from Dave and Rosanna from the Eternity Online Service, until we see you next time, it's bye. bye.